everyone. Today we're going to be talking about the difference between playing violin and playing cello. You might be deciding which instrument you want to choose, so hopefully we'll give you some information to help you make that decision. I'm Beth Blackerby from violinlab.com. And I'm Carolyn Hagler with cellodiscovery.com. All right, so we're going to talk about sound. I think it's pretty obvious which instrument makes the lowest noises. Mm -hmm. Noises. Oh, huh. Sounds. Sound. Yeah. The size of the instrument, the length of the strings, the density of the string yes. is going to determine the range. And ex ex to be exact, the cello is an octave and a fifth lower than the violin. So the lowest string on the violin is a G string. The lowest on the cello is a low C string. C string. Now, to me, it sounds even lower than that. It sounds so very, very low, but that's because I'm so used to the high sounds of a violin. And, and that is something to consider because if you're someone who loves the silky, you know, quality of those high, high frequencies, then, you know, violin really is a safe choice, but you may really resonate with the low resonating yeah. tones of, of an instrument. And you really can, you can <laughs> feel the vibrations of an instrument through your body. So these low notes. <laughs> that low sound yeah too. and also you you have a lot of bodily contact with yes, the instrument so do. you're going to we feel do. those vibrations whereas yeah. you know some people don't use a shoulder pad but most people do and we have a chin rest so the instrument itself really isn't touching you know the, sh the collarbone for instance so we don't really feel quite as much you know vibration um, so that is, I would think that that would be a really cool thing. Yeah, you know, we do. I mean, we, our sternum is making contact with the instrument yeah. in both knees. So you definitely feel that vibration coming through yeah. your whole body, your whole bone structure yeah. it's going through. Mm, that so. would be kind of meditative. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't say playing the violin is always meditative. <laughs> so is that, does that mean the violin's harder? Well, who had the melody there? You will find in, in a lot of chamber music situations and orchestra that the violins will have the melody more often than the cello part. So if you're the kind of person that kind of likes to, you know, be in the background, you know, be the underpinning, be the mm -hmm. rhythmic machine in the background. Be the root of it all. The root of it all, yeah. yes. But if you like to float on top and have all the fun notes, then, you know, the violin is, is a good choice. I think in recent years, cello has become really popular and is becoming mm -hmm. more of a soloistic instrument. Mm -hmm. I think you can find arrangements for cello where the cello has the melody. Definitely. And I think everyone loves to watch a cellist mm -hmm. play melodically. Mm -hmm. I do. Because yeah. it's just... It's very just, soulful. Yes, very soulful. And yeah. it's just kind of that whole body experience, yeah. you know? So um, I think that is... very well with yeah. people. Yeah. All right, so now let's talk about playing position. I think... One advantage to playing cello, at least in my opinion, is that mm -hmm. you can always, A, be sitting down. Yes. There is no such thing as standing up and playing cello. No. And the other thing That's is that Allen. it's... Oh. <laughs> the other thing is that I think that it's just in general probably more comfortable. Yeah. Uh, cello is really situated comfortably on your body. There's nothing awkward. It's definitely gravity is pulling you you down so you don't have to do any awkward position with your arms um you you just like you sit comfortably just like you would sit in a chair normally that's just how you would sit holding the cello it's pretty cool yeah and not and and kind of for violin i mean we definitely want to to you know have our bodies very aligned we right. don't want to do anything unnatural but let's talk about that left arm <laughs> Okay, well, yes, I think many of you might already realize that having to bring your left arm around and turn, yeah. I mean, it is kind of a stress, especially if you're an adult beginner and you just don't have, right. you know, the flexibility in these, with these tendons here in, in the form. How, how many things in life do you do this? Yeah, yeah. How, how often do you how go often through do you in actually life? Go like and, this? Yeah, you talk about, yeah, impassioned, like maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, um, so there are there are definite advantages to, to playing cello, and especially you know if you are, let's say you don't feel flexible enough you know to hold the violin, the cello might just mm -hmm. be in general more comfortable. Yeah. On the other hand, there are you know all kinds of solutions for holding a violin more comfortably. Now there are all kinds of different 
you know, chin rests and shoulder pads. When I was little, there was just like one kind. Right. But there's all kinds of ways to adjust to make holding the instrument more comfortable. And also for us, I mean, the, the, the hardest part for us is, is extensions with the hand. Because our strings and our notes are, are farther apart than the violins, we do have to stretch our fingers a little bit farther. Yeah. And so getting the right size instrument, first of all, will solve that problem because you can get an instrument that's sized correctly for your hand. But um, overall, that's probably our hardest part is learning how to really stretch those fingers out yeah, of it. That's true. That's true. And, and, and the violin is already constructed to be really pretty um, just fitting for the normal normal hand to easily reach the notes you know that you have to reach within a position. Right. So here's a question that a lot of people ask frequently and that is which is harder violin mm -hmm. or cello? Right. And I think they're both really hard you know they're stringed yeah. instruments no frets you know intonation is difficult we adhere to the same rules of physics right. so you know you can get a scratchy tone on a violin and a scratchy tone on a cello mm -hmm. so I think difficulty level in the end, it's going to be about the same. I would say that's probably true. Yeah, I think the music for violin in orchestras or school orchestras, the parts will be harder. There will be more notes. The oh, notes wow. might be faster, mm -hmm. so it does require more time. So in more time to prepare. So in that respect, it might be considered more difficult. But to play well and to play in tune and to play beautifully, mm -hmm. they're equally equally difficult. I would say I would say so. Yeah, yeah. I think there's just a, a level that you have to reach to, to become proficient on an instrument, and then there's this whole other level that you have to you have to grow into that makes you sound like a professional musician. Yeah. And so from get to get to here, from here to here is, is a tough spot anyway. But that that last part really takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of hard work to get there. So it's all hard to get there. It's just how do you practice? How do you learn? How do you get better? And um, so yeah, as far as that goes. Physics-wise, they're going to be similar that way. But and but I can I can just go ahead and, and insert this now. <laughs> but Carolyn and I have spent years learning how to teach and learning how to make sure that with the right skills and the right muscle movements and the right information, mm -hmm. it's not so hard. Right. You know, and as a, as a self-learning instrument, it's nearly impossible to sound really good right away and you mm -hmm. probably maybe you have already experienced that but by understanding the principles and learning the right technique from the beginning they're both kind of easy to get going you right. can make some really beautiful sounds right. you know just just right off the bat right and I did teach uh, orchestra public school orchestra for many years I had the opportunity yeah. <laughs> to start a lot of violinists violists cellists bassists and I got to witness what it was like for each of these students to start and grasp the instrument and get a good tone on it and as Beth said it's a it's a matter of physics it's about understanding how the instrument works and guiding somebody correctly from the very beginning so that it's not difficult you, you're right. lined up correctly with your instrument so that you can play well yeah yeah all right, now let's talk about portability. Which instrument is going to be more portable? I think it's clear which instrument is going to be more portable, but let's talk about why a little bit. So, for example, if you were to fly uh, and you need to take your instrument with you, Beth and I have flown together overseas, and I'm always a little jealous because Beth just gets to hop on the plane and put her <laughs> little down. violin above her and just take it with her. Me, on the other hand, um, if I put my cello underneath and I'll just say that I have a massive travel case that I use to fly with. It actually has airbags in it and it's 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 a monstrosity. But to get that through the checkpoints and they have to take my instrument completely out under the airbags un undress the whole thing to check it out. And then it, at one time it got stuck in the conveyor belt coming through the luggage area that wasn't supposed to go through there anyway. So portability is an issue with a cello. Even if you fly with your cello and you take it on, there's still usually some confrontations that happen. Mm -hmm. um, on the flip side, we, it's gotten easier to carry a cello, say, from your home to a rehearsal because now we have backpack straps on the back mm -hmm. of our cellos, whereas in the old days we have incredibly heavy instruments, no straps, no wheels. Heavy cases. Sorry, heavy yeah. cases. Heavy cases. We, we didn't have any straps or any wheels. Now we have wheels, we have mm -hmm. straps, and very light cases. So it is better than it used to be. It's still awkward. Yeah. So what's it like for you to travel with a violin? 
Oh, well, sometimes so I have to change from this hand and I have yeah. to hold it in this one because <laughs> this side of my shoulder sometimes gets a little sore, but yeah. otherwise it's not an issue. So <laughs> as you can see, she wins this one. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of times we get asked by people, um, you want to learn an instrument as an adult. Maybe you're in your 30s or your 50s or your 70s and you're trying to decide, is this something you can actually do as an adult? And then the next question is, okay, I do want to play a string instrument. Do I play the violin or, or do I play the cello? And I think there's, for Beth and I, it's more, it's not really about that. It's more about, are you able to take on something like this? Do you have what it takes to focus in and work towards a goal like this? It's yeah, not time, so much time you know, commitment. Yes. Yeah, so there's time commitments. You know, there's distractions in life. There is, you know, how, how are you set up? Are you getting private lessons? Are you taking lessons online? Um, there's a lot of factors that go into this and, and, and the biggest piece of this is a, is motivation It's getting set up properly getting the right guidance and then the motivation piece that you have to have to to stick it out and and actually work and you make steady progress and and on that note a lot of people have this dream of playing the instrument but they don't understand how long it's going to take to get there and this isn't an easy thing to do it's not a quick thing but it is an achievable thing i will say that yeah and if you ever see some ad that says like Learn to yeah. play like a pro in six in two weeks, weeks, three weeks a we month. We promise you that there's, that, there's no, no such thing as that. Yeah. It does it does take time. Yeah. But again, with you know, with regular practice and regular, you know, really is the operative word here. I mean, I think a lot of people put in some time, but it's sort of in phases or in pockets, mm -hmm. but it's just that slow and steady yeah. wins the race. You right. know, you do a little bit every day right. and you can just feel your skill growing right. and you're able to play you know, something that you couldn't play maybe mm -hmm. two or three weeks right. ago, and now you're playing right. it. It's just little step-by-step -step progress, and we have seen it, we have witnessed it both with our private websites for adult learners, mm -hmm. that people make progress. They do, they start from ground zero, and they really yeah. make that. Staggering yeah, progress. Yes, staggering progress, yeah. for sure. The, yeah, no, sometimes I just Correct. kind of, my jaw drops, and I was like, I can't believe yeah. they're playing so well. Right. It's fantastic. So again, it's not really about which instrument is harder. It's more about what can you do? Are you, are you capable of taking this on and committing for the long haul? When you make the decision over which instrument, that's really a personal choice. Which instrument, you know, grooves with you better? Do you, mm -hmm. do you just dig the sound of the violin or the cello? I mean, which one resonates with you? And yeah. I think that's what should determine your decision as far as which instrument you learn. Yeah. yeah. Ultimately, it's, yeah. yeah. What, what's the best fit for you? Yeah. Do you have the soul of a cellist? Do you have the soul right. of a violinist? Yeah. Right. <laughs> I think we chose the right one. I think so. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> so for a few of you, cost might be an issue, and you might have already looked into the cost of buying a cello versus the cost of buy buying a violin. And generally speaking, for just you know your basic beginning level instrument, you will pay more for the cello. It's a bigger instrument. But once you get to a more expensive level instrument, I mean, they're all going to be about the same. At that point, you know, you probably will have already been playing for several years and you're ready to upgrade. Mm -hmm. I think the most important thing though, and I say this, you know, certainly on Violin Lab, is to find an instrument that's well set up. Mm -hmm. and, and I think for that, if you are able, if you have a violin shop anywhere near you, yes. even within 200 miles, it's worth the trip to go into a specialty shop especially if there's someone with a repair person, a luthier on staff, because they have done quality assurance. Mm -hmm. They have cut the bridges right. so that the instrument is easy to play. That's the main thing is that it's really playable. Right. You don't want to struggle with a poorly set up instrument. Right. And if you just buy the cheapest thing you can off the internet, that's often what you'll get. So if you do have to order online, order from you know, a really reputable company that's been around forever, like Char Music, right. and you, know, right. you will get something that has been well set up so that you can have success right away. Right. And on that note, I mean, a lot of people, they, they really do go on the internet first and they say, well, I can actually buy mm -hmm. a whole kit. I can get yep. the instrument, the case, the bow, everything that goes with it for what it would cost me to rent for two or three months. Yeah. It's a no brainer. I need to buy that internet instrument, but yeah. you're, you're, I just hate to say it, but you're going to get some, some garbage yeah. at that point. It's not playable. They're pretty. I mean, those yeah. are really pretty. They're instruments. shiny. They're so shiny. <laughs> yeah. There isn't a dink 
<laughs> or autumn, and I mean they're lovely. There's no question, but yeah. um, they're they're not playable. They're not they're not going to get the rich sound that you need to get, and they're and you're going to struggle with it because it's set up poorly. So yeah. don't invest your money in that because you're going to go to a luthier and have it set up, and you're going to spend more money on that than you did buying yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, and a lot, and and most shops have really actually quality, really good mm-hmm. level, high level instruments to rent. Yeah. And I think, and then they have rent to own programs. Right. So that's always a really good way to get started. Now just general costs, you know, cello strings are quite a bit more than violin strings, yeah, they but they don't have to change them as often. So I think probably in how, the How end, often do you change yours? Um, I change mine, you know, I three to four times a year. Okay, I would say, Two to three times. I probably yeah. should change them more, but two to three times. And my strings are very expensive. Yeah. So, I mean, three to four hundred dollars for the set. A That's year. not to say no per set. Oh, yeah. Per set. Yeah. That's not to say that you have to spend that kind of money because there's a lot of options out there for good quality strings that don't cost that. I just found one that I love and it just resonates perfectly with my instrument. So, I buy those every time. Yeah. But that is an expense. And I would say probably yearly, you know, I, I guess I spend about four hundred dollars a year mm-hmm. on strings yeah and then as far as the bow bow maintenance we get our bows rehaired about the same mm-hmm. you know it, the the cello bow doesn't take you know yeah a, a harder beating than, right. than a violin bow and so i think once a year They're, on yeah. average i try I to say get that's it about what rehaired. i do yeah but yeah you know again if you can just find find a place where their rental programs also will upgrade the string so if you know if, if someone is bringing that instrument in they automatically change the strings if Mm -hmm. you break a string they will automatically replace it so it's always wonderful to really establish a rapport you know with with your local luthier or at least again some some place near where you live and beth used to own a very well respected violin shop in town so she definitely knows about this and what it what it should be so and also on that note uh, be careful that you don't just go to any music store a lot of people go to what what i would consider sort of a more generic music store those are going to be stores that focus more on maybe band instruments or uh, you know percussion and guitars and they may not necessarily have a person that is skilled as far as setting up and understanding strings so make sure you go to a string shop specializes yeah, in or strings and type when you when you're typing in the google box Type in violin shop, yeah, and then the the town or the the the, the nearest town yeah, where you live, up. and so because yeah, because I think violin shops consider them they call themselves violin shops even though they have the full right. you know family of stringed instruments. Right. So that's how you would type that in and find what you need. So another cost that you're going to encounter is lessons. You really can't learn this on your own. A lot of people love to just be self-taught on YouTube. And of course, there is plenty of really great information on YouTube, but there's a lot of information that may not be as as quality. And so therefore, you might be getting some conflicting information. So find yourself a really good teacher who's very experienced in your area. That's the first option to do. Lessons, I would say on the average, tend to be between about 50 to $100 a lesson, would mm-hmm. you say? Mm-hmm. And most people take weekly, so that is typically an expense that you'll, mm-hmm. you'll incur, but... <laughs> However, yes, you, you can look online and you can find learning platforms with full you know, curriculums that, that you know, have been developed over a long period of time. And so those, that information and those lessons are there. And that way you can watch and rewatch and you can learn these concepts. And then there, we have practice, um, practice resources that you can, you know, use to, to make your practices very efficient. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, optionally you can post video on your site, on Mm -hmm. your community page. You can have video exchange lessons with me if you want really specific Mm one-on-one feedback. So that is also a really good option if you can't find a local teacher right. who specializes in adult learning, and that, that would be a, a first question to ask mm-hmm. if they have taught other adults or if they enjoy mm-hmm. teaching adults. Yeah, yep. for sure. Yeah, But we'd love to have yeah. you on our site. For sure. If you enjoyed this video, give this video a thumbs up and like the channel. You can also like uh, my channel below. It's a budding new YouTube channel, and the link is below. And um, we'd love to see you on Violin Lab or Cello Discovery. And we thank you for joining us today.